<laughs> it's probably got me doing all sorts of cool stuff. Um, we have no monitors, so I don't know what I look like when I do this sort of thing, but um, I suppose it's probably very applied. No, gosh, here we go. Behavior beast, folks. Uh, we're back this time. The, uh, I don't know, the characteristics of applied behavior analysis. Um, it's pretty easy, really. But <laughs> we're applied. Who would have thunk it, right? Um, so we're applied in the sense that we solve problems that are relevant for an individual. Maybe relevant for lots of individuals, but you need to realize something. We don't solve problems just to solve problems. We solve problems when there's a need. And only when there's a need, folks. The question is often, who demonstrates the need? Who, who is it that needs something? My clients? You? Me? <laughs> I always need modification of my behavior. <laughs> um, but that was kind of weird. <sighs> anyway, I digress. Um, so any applied situation, anything that is uh, socially significant, right? So that's the type of behavior we're going to work with. Really any behavior, but as long as it's socially significant to the person or, um, or to society, ironically. All right, behavioral. Oh, everybody rolls their eyes. Behavioral, what do you mean behavioral? It means simply this. We're going to study behavior for behavior's sake. We're not going to do studies about behavior. We're going to do studies of behavior. We're going to focus on behavior. We're going to focus on actions. What you say counts. That's verbal behavior, right? What you feel counts. That's emoting, right? Um, we, we, actions, right? If it ends in ing, we're probably going to focus on it. If I turned around and did some fishing, we could do that. Um, we, not that that's socially significant. Well, I suppose you could teach someone how to fish. That'd be very socially significant. Eating uh, socially significant. Eating, yes. Very, <laughs> there's a lot of people out there that have a difficult time eating uh, for a lot of reasons. So we could work with that, right? So when someone with autism has an eating issue, we can help solve that. We can totally get in and manipulate the environment to help address the behaviors in question, to help that individual eat healthier foods and to eat in general. So that's, that's an example. So behavioral, um, it, it has to be measurable behavior. We're not talking about behavior that we can't measure which is a bit of a circular argument, uh, things that we can't directly observe, right? So it's a little hard to do the thinking stuff, but we can always rely on self-report. Kind of stinky, but it, it, it's better than nothing. Um, analytic. Um, we are going to focus on functional relations. We're going to figure out how something is related to something else. Um, sitting on these rocks makes my bum sore, right? So we're going to establish that relation over time. And we're going to discover that if this person always complains about their thump, their bum being sore, maybe they shouldn't sit on rocks so often, right? It sounds really simple, and in a sense it is. But to get to that functional relation, to get to that cause and effect and that understanding, it takes a lot of work, and it takes the scientific method, which is why when we teach people about behavior analysis, we have to teach about scientific method too. It all goes hand in hand, right? Technological. Now, that's not the type of technology you're thinking about, not this fancy, fuzzy technology that Brad's using here. Um, we're talking about technology of behavior, of how our science is done, the most current effective practices in our field. It may be that technology, as you know it, is involved, but I'm talking about, and we're talking about the technology of behavior of our field. Do we understand that technology? Um, and well, that was kind of weird. Do we understand? Of course we understand it, otherwise we wouldn't be using it. Ha ha ha. Um, you don't use a teleporter until you know how to use a teleporter. Um, not that there are teleporters, but maybe someday when you're watching this video in 2040, 45, maybe there is a teleporter. I don't know. Anyway, so technological, ah, here's another one. It's really cool. Conceptually systematic. Whew, that's a big one, right? Everything fits together. I'm not going to use a hypothetical construct to explain behavior. Why? Because I'm behavior analytic. I'm going to focus on environmental constraints. I'm going to focus on um, the learning history of the organism, of the person, to explain behavior and to understand what's happening. So we're going to keep everything together. We're going to all wrap it up nicely. We're not going to borrow from this philosophy and that philosophy and this one, that and the other thing. Um, we are going to focus on our science and our philosophy, and we're going to keep everything interlinked. We're not going to explain a reinforcement using some hypothetical process. We're not going to use explanatory fictions. All the stuff that's out for radical behaviorism, we're not going to use in applied behavior analysis either. And 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 effective, folks. We're an evidence-based practice, and don't forget that. Uh, I think that that's probably one of the most important things about this, is that we are an evidence-based practice. We have hard data. We have hard science that we use to inform our everyday practices. Applied practices are not nearly as hard, so to speak, scientifically, um, as, as our experimental analysis of behavior. But they came from that. 
and we test them. We do experimentation in the real world. Sure, you might have a little bit of weakened internal validity, but you've got you've maximized your external validity, right? So, so we borrow from the lab to apply in the real world, and that is an absolutely important piece that we only do stuff that's effective. So, so the last thing we've got is generality. We're not going to teach someone just how to mow this bit of grass here. We're going to teach somebody how to mow this grass, and hopefully we're going to teach them in a way that generalizes to that grass over there, or over there, and over there, and down that way. And we're going, to, we're going to teach them skills that allow them to function in their lifetime, right? That generalize beyond the specific training environment that we're working with. We're going to teach relevant skills, right? Remember, we kind of talked about that, social importance, right? So we're going to go back and teach people skills that generalize beyond the setting that we're working in to give them the tools to function in their world. That whole big picture, wrapping that all up to uh, wrapping that all together, becomes the field of applied behavior analysis, and I think you'll find it drastically different than a lot of other areas of psychology. In fact, so different that you might not even consider this a branch of psychology, and many of us don't. <laughs> anyway, that's for another time. We'll talk to you later. See ya. <laughs> time for a swim.